Greetings from your fully charged show Australian correspondent. I'm Simone and today I'm going to see if it's actually possible to live the dream of being able to set your RV up anywhere you like, wherever the road takes you and be able to use all of your amenities without plugging into the grid or using a generator. So as you can see we've set up here on this beautiful block of land in rural South Australia. We're in the heart of nature and we have with us the Retreat ERV which is the world's first all-electric caravan. Now, there's not an electrical outlet in sight, so how are we gonna power this baby? Well, with solar energy and the state-of-the-art battery and inverter, that's how. Like the Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. RVs or recreational vehicles are on the upsurge, particularly with first time buyers. Now, depending on where you've been in the world over the past three years, the pandemic would have definitely affected your travel, whether it's your desire to travel or your ability to travel with lockdowns and all the uncertainty and the like that we're all unfortunately very familiar with. So road trips have become even more appealing in that they give you control over the entire journey. And that's what I love about this ERV. It takes that freedom to the next level because you don't have to rely on an external power source. So suddenly all these possibilities open up as to where you can stop while still having use of all your necessary facilities for as long as you need to use them as well. And you don't have to solely rely on the grid or a noisy carbon monoxide emitting generator. You know, here in Australia, if you have a look around, there's big long stretches between towns, sometimes hundreds of kilometers. And what's great is with this ERV, you know that you're fully self-sufficient using renewable solar energy, and that's so cool. You can also choose to avoid crowded caravan sites, especially during those busy periods. For those of you who are familiar with typical caravan or RV design, you might be pleased to see that because the ERV doesn't use any gas, it doesn't have to have those air vents that you typically see, which means that you don't get the dust that you, you know, normally goes hand in hand with those vents. This cabin is completely sealed. When you're traveling around Australia, your RV needs to be able to manage all kinds of terrain. So this ERV has off-roading capability, as you can see by the awesome clearance. And a very clever and safe part of the design or engineering is that the battery, if you can see under there, is chassis integrated. And it's also submergible to a depth of one meter for a minimum of 30 minutes. And that's like the only battery that can do that. It's really important if you're up in the tropics or going through creek beds or river beds and that kind of thing. Um, it's also encased in a 50 millimeter crush proof shell in case you encounter some really severe off-roading conditions. So it's very, very hardy and it can definitely take, as we say in Oz, a real bush bashing. Personally, I've always been a glamper as opposed to a camper. And what I love is you walk inside this ERV and you're met with the kind of sleek, cozy elegance that you might find in an upmarket hotel room. Like I'm a real big fan of these stylistic touches like LED strip lights. How cool is that? I think I need that in my life. Also, we've got upholstered finishes here. Even the power points look really elegant, but they've also thought of practical touches as well. So we've got things like USB chargers over here. Um, this here is a block out blind that's magnetized. So you don't need to worry about curtains flying around. Um, look at the cupboard space as well. Every little nook seems to have a place where you can store your things. I just want to show you some of the other facilities that we have on board. So we've got a convection microwave, we've got an induction cooktop, we have a 274 litre fridge freezer which they reckon is the biggest that you can get into an RV um, and that also runs on 12 volts as well. Now in the bathroom you've got a very decent sized shower. It's fiberglass and you've got all of your chrome accessories, it looks so modern, I love it. And oh would you look at that? A top loader washing machine. I really love this bed too. So it's got a pillow top mattress and both parties can get out either side which you don't always find in RVs. And if you follow me over here I've got a little spot for my phone, I've got a PowerPoint and I've got a nightlight. And interestingly the air con in this unit instead of being in the roof where they normally are is under the bed because obviously we've got the solar panels on the roof. So here's your air conditioning unit under this panel and the ducts blow out there. Oh, and also every ERV comes with a smart TV.
The solar technology powering this Retreat ERV-210R is a 2200 watt premium solar array. So we have five solar panels on the roof and these are commercial grades. So none of those shabby solar panels that you see on some other RVs. These are what you'd find on an actual house. And there's a patented curved mounting system that has them lie slightly above the roof rather than flat, which keeps them cooler and obviously working more efficiently. So the solar energy feeds the DCX power solution. And what that is, is a self-contained energy pack containing a 5,000 watt bi-directional smart inverter and a state-of-the-art 14.3 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. And that's basically like having 10 120 amp hour lithium batteries, which is pretty cool. So it's made by an Australian engineering company called Ozex Corp. And it allows you to store the excess energy that you've harnessed from the sun and go off on your off-grid adventure. But it also provides two different charging methods. So your solar charging, as well as 230 volt AC grid or generator charging, which opens up your options in the rare event that you need an extra top up every now and again. DC to DC technology is currently in the works and will be available to retrofit as the Ozex Corp DCX system already has the provision built in. So what's cool is I can come inside, parked in the middle of nowhere, not a plug in sight, and I can power my lighting, my cooling, my refrigerator. I can boil the kettle, I can use my hairdryer, and I can make some toast all at the same time. Basically, any 240 volt appliance combo up to 5,000 watts, thanks to the capability of this inverter. So a question that people have is, well, how quickly would your battery deplete using all of these appliances simultaneously? It's kind of like how long's a piece of string. Let's look at an example of lunch and breakfast for two people. We can do some calculations to give us an idea of how much energy we'd use by midday. Let's say two people used an 1800 watt coffee pod machine for one minute each. That would be 0.06 kilowatt hours of energy used. And then consider perhaps an 800 watt toaster for two minutes, an 1800 watt induction cooktop for 30 minutes, let's say, an 1800 watt electric barbecue for 15 minutes, a thousand watt hot water unit for one hour, refrigerator usage overnight, etc., etc and you'd basically only have used around three kilowatt hours of energy in total by midday. And also, at this time of year in summer, with its long sunny days, you could be confident that the state of charge would be nearing close to fully charged by noon anyway. So one of my questions for the retreat team was how long would it take to charge the battery from solar alone if it became depleted? Now, obviously there are a lot of factors to consider like, you know, the location, the time of year, atmospheric conditions, um, shading, even soiling of your solar panels. All of these are gonna have an impact. Um, but last October, they had an ERV technician conduct a test. So that's our springtime. Now at 9.15 a.m. the ERV was energised and it was showing a 0% state of charge on the battery management system. By 5.08 p.m. it had reached 96%. So that's 13.5 kilowatt hours in around eight hours. Now it could have been even more if they'd started at dawn and finished at sunset. Um, similarly, in the same location in June, which is our winter, you can expect to generate seven to nine kilowatt hours. So it's more than enough for your daily needs. Running the ERV purely on solar, you do need to consider atmospheric conditions. So thick cloud cover, heavy rainfall, even bushfire smoke, all of these things interrupt the solar radiation that reaches the panels. But you have such a capable battery bank that it can have you covered for days of these sorts of conditions. Now, another burning question that I had was how long could you technically go off grid for? Now, Retreat enlisted a test couple and they got to travel around Australia for six months from March to September and those are our cooler months and they were able to live off-grid the entire time using solar power only and even more amazingly at one stage they were even powering another caravan for a few days using lighting cooling and appliances I mean how cool is that that you know on a trip away you'd be able to power your mates caravans too but what if you don't feel the need to go off-grid well, let's say you're at a caravan site and plugged in. Another benefit of the ERV is that you can exceed the amount of power allowed by the grid because you have your solar backup. If you exceed 15 amps in most caravans, it will trip the shore power circuit breaker. But the ERV will automatically switch to solar or battery power within 20 milliseconds if this occurs. So you still get 5,000 watts of continuous power running. Then if power usage drops below 15 amps again, it switches back to shore power. Pretty clever. You guys have got to see this cool feature. 
we have an electric Weber, which is so cool because, you know, obviously they're normally powered by gas. But even if you're at a national park and there's a fire ban, you will be the only person who can still cook a barbie. All right, so how did we tow this 3.5 tonne beast here to this lovely secluded spot? Yes, you heard that right, 3.5 tonne fully loaded. Well, for those of you for whom driving an EV is the only option, therein was our challenge. Because currently in Australia, we don't have an EV capable of towing this ERV. So elsewhere in the world, a Rivian R1T or a F-150 Lightning could tow this no problems. But despite rumours and eager fan bases, we haven't got any confirmation of either of them appearing on our shores anytime soon. So the Tesla Model X, the BMW iX, you know, they tow, they have a tow rating between like 2.2 to 2.5 tonne. So even they can't do the job with this ERV. In Australia, only a few EVs are actually set up to tow. So sometimes that's just a limitation of the engineering itself or it's because they didn't get a tow kit certified to the Australian design rules, which is apparently a bit of a process. So EVs that can tow overseas, some models, can't actually tow in Australia, which is a real shame, but we're hoping that consumer demand is gonna change this in the very near future. So how does the ERV compare to your typical RV? Well, most ERV converts agree that the all-electric aspect is easier to use and more convenient than your typical gas and diesel-powered caravan. The key differentiator here is that compared to solar and battery setups in other RVs, the ERV is virtually a power plant on wheels with an incomparable solar array and battery and inverter capacity. As a final note, for those interested, V2H or vehicle to home technology would enable the battery of the ERV to potentially power your home in situations like a power blackout. So that's another notch on the belt that the ERV can boast about. Prices start at around $140,000, which is absolutely amazing considering that other RVs in its price range have one tenth the power capability. I just love the freedom that this one of a kind ERV brings you in that you can be completely self-sufficient using clean energy and not have to give up your creature comforts. And that just opens up so many possibilities to travel this big, beautiful country. <laughs>